what's up you guys welcome back to my channel in this video I am super excited because if you cannot tell or if you haven't noticed I had a ad in the beginning of this video so I have finally been monetized on YouTube so this is big for me because honestly when I started my channel I did not think I would be monetized anytime soon because I know it takes people some time and the qualifications for me seemed like a lot. It seemed like a lot. If you are not already aware, to be monetized on YouTube, you have to have at least 1,000 subscribers and you have to have 4,000 hours of watch time. So 4,000 hours of watch time is quite a lot, not 4,000 minutes. 4,000 hours. So that is 240,000 minutes of watch time. So when I saw those numbers, I was like, honestly, this may even take a few years. But because I needed an outlet, honestly, I needed a mental break. I needed something to distract myself from the regular world. So, <laughs> so that was my little outlet. But I'm glad to say that I was able to be monetized in less than a year. So in this video, I'm just going to run you guys down on a few different tips I have. I'm also going to run down the actual monetization process, the approval process, as well as applying for AdSense. So if you're interested in any of that, stay tuned. So first, I want to go back to the qualifications. So like I said, you need at least a thousand subscribers as well as 4,000 hours of watch time. So with me, I think I made about 30 videos or so before I reached a thousand subscribers and I think a few more videos after that until I hit the 4,000 hours of watch time. So I know I was waiting a bit after I hit the thousand subscribers So it didn't really happen around the same time Some people have a thousand subscribers for a few years before they reach the actual 4,000 hours of watch time. So one tip I do have for new content creators who are starting a YouTube channel is to consider making longer videos so that was really instrumental for me to hit the watch time within a year because if you think about it if you have super short videos then it's gonna take you so much longer and so many videos to hit the watch time but normally when you make longer videos I would say at least 10 minutes then people are watching a bit longer so even if people watch three minutes out of a 10 minute video it's a lot more time than one minute out of a, just a three minute video. Catch my drift? <laughs> so that's just one little tip. And another tip I would say is to try to stay consistent. Even though I am not the best when it comes to consistency, I was trying my best to at least put out two videos a week. And sometimes I may have fallen short. Sometimes I may have only done one video or no video at all, but I would make sure to at least pick up the next week, kind of like working out. If I don't work out one week I have to at least make sure that I'm working out the next week so that it kind of like keeps with the flow with the losing weight just like you want to keep with the momentum you want to still be able to be noticed in the YouTube algorithm there are so many things that take part in the YouTube algorithm but they definitely love consistency and they also love longer videos so that's another reason why it may be important to film longer videos rather than just super short ones so, but I know that could be hard when you are a new creator. It's kind of awkward talking to a camera. You're not really thinking about the people who are there. You're just kind of thinking, this is super awkward, but once you do it a few times, you do get a little bit more comfortable. I can't say I'm a complete pro, but you do start to get a little bit more comfortable in front of the camera. Okay, so I started my YouTube channel in March of 2020, and I believe I reached the threshold for monetization in February of 2021 this year. So it took me about 11 months to hit the threshold for monetization on YouTube, and I think that's pretty good. It probably could have been a bit faster if I was putting out more videos, but I work a 9 to 5, and honestly, when I come home half the time, I'm too tired to think of doing anything else other than just binge watching some Netflix, but one or two videos a week pretty much did the job for me. So one pretty good app that I was using when I was trying to track my hours was the YouTube tracker app. So it's pretty straightforward. It just shows you how many subscribers you have and then how much watch time you have. So 
I don't know if you can see it, but it kind of just tracks it there for you. So once you hit the threshold, it turns green. And I honestly loved looking at that. It was kind of like a little game to me because I was bored. There wasn't anything else to do. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? Let's see if I can hit this goal within a year. And the YouTube tracker app really did help me kind of pushed me to upload more videos because honestly when I started this I wasn't even sure if I was going to be uploading videos all the time I was just kind of like you know what I'll post the first few videos see what happens some people film a good 20 videos before they even start their YouTube account and then they just scheduled them to post and honestly that probably would be a good idea as well if you're able to do it but for me I'm the type of person where I just have to jump off of the deep end and just start or else I'm never starting so that's one thing some people may want to just film a bunch of content first get kind of comfortable in front of the camera and then just schedule them to post so that you are scheduling them like the same time every week I'm going to get there I want to be able to just schedule videos the same time every week I think that also is a really good thing to grow your YouTube channel I've heard from other people that that's what they do so like I said it took me about 11 months to actually reach the threshold and one other way you can kind of keep track of it is the monetization tab in the YouTube studio you there is a little ticker there that shows you when how far along you are and when you reach the goal I think it will be a check mark or something like that so once you hit the goal the next step is to go into that monetization tab and press I think I'm not sure if it's a start or something there's there'll be it'll be different there will be a new button there for you to press and I believe it is start or something so once you press that it will have three steps and it will tell you um, first step is to sign the little contract read the agreement and sign off on that for the YouTube partner program the next step is to sign up for Adsense so this is another big thing some people have some problems signing up for Adsense if you do not already have an account so you can have a Adsense account if you have like a blog if you are already a boss on the online space and you have like a website where you have ads on your website you may already have an Adsense account but for a lot of people like me I didn't have one so you have to sign up for Adsense so one thing that I think has changed in 2021 or even in 2020 recently is that you can sign up for Adsense beforehand which I thought you were able to so just kind of keep that in mind make sure that you don't kind of screw up your email address and try to sign up for Adsense beforehand like I did if you if you can so I was trying I had like a little blog page I was trying to sign up on that and then I realized I couldn't the AdSense application kind of got mixed up so I had to use a different email address so that's one little tip if you are having any problems signing up for AdSense you can just use a different email address and sign up through that email because you can only have one AdSense account per email address once you hit the threshold you click sign up for the adsense through the youtube studio and it will bring you over to adsense and sign you up in that way it'll it will already auto populate your youtube link and it will be super easy you just go through put in your contact information fill out the little questionnaire and it will put you into the queue to see if you are approved for the adsense account so i think that took I think that took a few days actually um, I want to say that the AdSense approval process took a few days so it wasn't just instant you sign up you put it in there and then it takes a few days before you are approved some people I've heard it takes a few weeks as well so I was lucky I think it took like two days for it to be approved for my AdSense account and then once your AdSense account is approved it automatically swings you into the queue to be approved for the YouTube partner program for monetization so that is where all the fun begins because you are kind of having to sit and wait and hope and pray that everything on your YouTube channel checks out you got to hope there's no copyright issues you got to make sure that everything on your page is legit you're not taking anybody's content you're not using anybody's music you are making original content okay so there are a few things that you can do to make sure your YouTube channel is on the up and up before you even hit 
the monetization threshold and apply to just to make sure everything runs super smoothly. One thing, you do have to make sure that you are using copyright free music. This one is a huge tip, you guys. I've heard of people lose out on a lot of money because they made videos that had non-copyright free music in it from before they were monetized, not really thinking, and maybe it was even just a short clip, and maybe that video got thousands and thousands of views and it was demonetized. So just make sure that all of your music is copyright free, that also helps when and you are getting reviewed for monetization because if you have copyright strikes on your channel then they may not approve you also make sure you're not taking any clips from anyone else that is like say a whole music video or something like that and you're just using a whole video as a part of your YouTube video don't do any of that also be careful with giveaways because I think they have their own policies when it comes to giveaways and just read through the YouTube partner program policies and guidelines. Make sure you are not infringing on any of them and you should be good to go. Okay, so moving on to when you get that congratulations letter in your email, when you are super happy and you see that congratulations, you have been entered into the or accepted into the YouTube partner program for monetization <laughs> whatever they say they say something along those lines that means it is time for you to turn on the ads on your videos so to make sure you turn on all the ads on your videos you can choose which type of ads you want on your videos and where you want them placed so just be sure to don't just turn it on place exactly where you want the ads and the type of ads that you want. So you can get the little ads that show at the bottom of your videos, you can get the ads that are like mid-roll if it is 10 minutes or more, and you can get the bumper ads at the beginning and the end of your video. So just make sure that you are actually going into the settings and putting the ads exactly where you want them. The more ads you place, the more chances you have to be monetized when someone watches the ad for your video. So that's something to keep in mind as well. But you do not want to bombard your viewers with ads. So that is also a turn off. So I normally like to just put one ad at the beginning, one at the end, and then one ad in the middle if it's like a 10 minute video. Okay, so once you have all your ads going on your videos and you notice that you're seeing a little revenue in your YouTube studio, you have to go into your AdSense account and make sure that everything is filled out. You got to fill out your address information and then make sure that it is accurate because you will be sent a pin in the mail to make sure you're not some robot and you are an actual person and it's the correct address so the pin in the mail is sent in a little envelope like this so this envelope has a pin it's like a six digit pin and you just have to put in the little code and that will verify that it is your correct address. Okay, so in terms of how long it took me to get my actual pin in the mail, I know a lot of people have issues with this and it takes them a long time. Some people it takes months and then they have to re-request the pin in AdSense and wait for it again. Luckily for me, it only took about two and a half weeks for me to get the pin because they sent it out February 19th and then I got it March the 8th. So that is is amazing because I know there is a lot of problems with post right now and it's taking a bit of time but for me in Canada it took me about two two and a half weeks to get my pin in the mail so after you enter your pin and verify your address there is one more step It's kind of like jumping through hoops there are a few things that they make you do to verify your identity and make sure that you are who you say you are. So another thing for the actual payment, you have to verify your direct deposit information. So you enter your direct deposit information once you hit the threshold of $100, I believe it is, depending on where you live. For me in Canada, it's $100. Once you hit that threshold, you have to put in your banking information. So once you put in your banking information, they're going to deposit a little amount into your bank account under a dollar. You just have to go back into AdSense and type in that exact amount to verify that that account is yours. So after all those steps, <laughs> Oh my gosh, it seems like a lot of steps, but it really wasn't that bad. But after all of those steps, you can finally start to get your payments in your bank account. Okay. <laughs> 
can finally start to get your payments. So you get paid once a month with Google AdSense and you get paid around the 21st of each month. So you get paid that month for the prior month. So how much money you made in February, you are going to get paid the lump sum of that on the 21st of March. So the payment cycle is just one month behind. And if you do not meet your $100 threshold by the end of the month, they will bring that forward to the next month and build it on with your how much you made for that month and then pay you the prior month. So you just have to make at least $100 for the month to get paid for the following month. Are you following me? I don't know if I'm making sense. I'm hoping I am and I'm being as clear and concise as I can be. I want to give you guys all the tea, all the information so you are not missing out on any of the information because I know when I was going through this process there were so many different videos telling me different things so this is an updated one for 2021. It seems like YouTube is always changing policies. Speaking of changing policies, so recently they have changed their tax policies for YouTubers who reside outside of the US. So that applies to me, I live in Canada. So the new policy says that if you are a resident outside of Canada, you are subject to, you can be subject to getting taxed up to 30%. That means that if you are a YouTuber that lives outside of US, they could come for your money, okay? <laughs> That's kind of dramatic, but they can tax you up to 30% of the revenue that you are making from the videos of the people who are US viewers, if that makes sense. So it's, if your viewer base is mostly in Russia, for example, and you live in Russia, then that's not really a big deal for you. But if you say, like me, you live in Canada and most of your viewer base live in the States, they can tax up to 30% of that revenue. So I say that all to say that there is a bit of a way to kind of work around this because certain countries do have a tax treaty with the US. Luckily, Canada is one of them. I think the UK and there's a few other um, countries as well. So if you are in a country outside of the US, check to see if the country you live in, it qualifies for the tax treaty. So I didn't know that at first, I thought they were asking for tax information and they did ask me something about a tax treaty, but I wasn't really sure what it meant until I was watching some YouTube videos and I saw that when I went back into my AdSense account, it said I would be taxed 30%, which is the highest. So I was shook. I was shook if, okay? I was so shocked because it just seemed like as soon as I got monetized, it said, you're gonna be taxed, and this is not something they've been doing in the past. It's just recently, I think maybe a few months ago that they changed it, maybe since the beginning of the year. So I went back in and I filled out my tax document correctly this time, and I applied for the tax treaty, and luckily, supposedly it went through, it says approved, and it says 0%. So that's all I wanted to see because I'm gonna have to be paying my own taxes in Canada when tax time comes, so I really did not need the US to take any more of the little bit of money that <laughs> I am making. So I'm glad that I sorted that out. Let me know in the comments below if you want a more detailed video on the tax treaty or anything else when it comes to YouTube content because normally I don't really do videos like this, but I'm super passionate about it and I would love to share the things that I've learned with you guys. I spent so much of my time watching YouTube. If I spent half of that time actually creating more content, I would probably be a lot better off, but I just love the platform entirely I love that you can create whatever you want to create for the most part as long as it's respectable and you can post things for free you don't have to pay to use the platform that's it for this video be sure to let me know in the comments below if you want me to do any other YouTube content like this if you want to know anything else about AdSense or the tax treaty I'll be sure to make another video for you guys also be sure to give me a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe to my channel so that you never miss an upload thanks for watching bye